In this video, I'm going to explore a little bit the effect of a solvent and a solvent model in the properties of molecules. In this case, I'm going to explore what the effect of an explicit water solvent is on the IR spectra of the alanine amino acid molecule in its neutral form, not its suiterionic form. So this is the optimized structure of alanine and I have also optimized the geometry of the alanine molecule solvated with 12 water molecules. We can see here the solvated molecule. All the first solvation shell, but this should be enough for our purposes. I'm going to show now actually the output files. This contains the options that I did. I put a small, I drew an alanine molecule in Chemcraft and I copied the coordinates here. And I run a calculation doing an optimization plus frequencies calculation with a neutral molecule and a spin multiplicity of 1. And I use PV0 and F2 TZBP as a basis set because I don't want the basis set to be an inaccuracy problem. Here I did another calculation which is the same as before instead that I added the CPCM model to model the implicit uh, solvation by water. And here this is the last calculation that contains the implicit water solvation, but also contains the different water molecules. I added the water molecules manually, in more or less close to the alanine molecule, and let the ORCA optimize the structure. So that's the main difference between the three calculations. So if we look here at the solvated alanine molecule, if we are in Avogadro, we have just opened the output files, and if I go to analysis, vibrational modes, I have a small table that allows me to uh, visualize the different modes. So I will choose some of them. For example, if I start the animation, you see here that I have mostly water modes, but if I move, eventually I would get to uh, one of the alanine modes. So here you can see the full spectrum. It's actually not the full spectrum because I manually removed from the infrared uh, table of peaks, I removed the vibrations that were mostly uh, based on the water because I wanted to only compare the effect on the alanine vibrations. So the, the yellow bars are the vibrations with the frequency and the intensity of the alanine molecule which was explicitly solvated by 12 water molecules. The pink ones are in the gas phase and the orange ones are in the uh, implicit water solvent model. So I will show you how I did that. It's not difficult. Here, for example, I took one of the output files and I, if I go to the end of the file, you will see the entropy and enthalpy corrections. You will see a list of the frequencies, but if you go up, you will see the IR spectrum. So basically I just took this part and I copied it to a new empty um, file, text file, which I just named with the same name but with IR uh, in front of it. So then I just imported that to Origin, and here we have a table of peaks, which contains the frequencies and the uh, intensities. There are different uh, units for intensities. So I just plot those peaks as a bar graph. It's not the best way to visualize the spectrum, but it's the easiest and fastest one. So if we look at the three superimposed spectra, we see that they are not the same, but we want to see how different they are. So we're only going to focus on some vibrational modes. So for example, in this region here, these are going to be the CO stretching modes. So if I plot them here, these are all CO stretching modes, and the gas phase is at around 1850, the Implicit solvent is around uh, 1790 and the calculation with the implicit plus explicit solvation is at 1772 web numbers. So if we go here, we can see that this is the vibration at 1772. If we open the gas phase calculation, we can see that this vibration is at 1853. So that's a big difference. But so, how do we know how accurate the different calculations are? Because we don't really know the 
actual experimental values. So I found a paper that contains partial results on the IR spectra of alanine, hydrated alanine. It's this paper by these authors. So this is a preprint uh, repository. And in here, we can see that different, they did calculations, but they reference experimental values. And in here, we can see a table, a table for the experimental IR uh, frequencies between 1000 and 2000 weight numbers of the hydrated neutral alanine. So we can see here that the experimental value for the CO stretching is 1774. And we got 1772 out of our uh, solvated calculation, explicitly solvated calculation. And the others were uh, really far off. So if we go here to other peaks, we can see a huge difference between the OH vibrations. For the gas phase and the implicitly solvated models, we have the OH stretching at between uh, 3750 and 3800. But the, for the explicitly solvated molecule, this goes at around 3060. So it's a huge difference, which makes sense because hydrogen bonds are very important in any molecule that contains OH groups, especially carboxylic acids in water. So we would not expect the implicit solvation to do such a good job, but this is actually surprising because it's a quite a large difference. We can go and see again the stretching modes. For example, this is the gas phase. So we will find the OH here. That's the highest frequency vibration. That's 3787. And if we go here to the uh, explicitly hydrated molecule, this should be around here. So it's a mixed mode, but it contains the OH stretching. So if we go back to the full spectrum, we will see that some particular transitions are not going to be very different. In the low energy region, there are several more transitions for the explicitly solvated molecule. That's probably because many of the modes were mixtures of water vibrations and alanine vibrations. And I tried to only keep the alanine vibrations, but in some cases it was hard to decide which ones were just from the alanine. But in some cases you are going to see a match between the different vibrations, but I just wanted to show that you have to be careful with this. So hopefully this has been useful. I'm not saying that you shouldn't use implicit solvation. For many cases it is good enough, but you have to keep in mind these situations where you actually need to go a little bit to a more detailed model.